Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part nine of Robot X, the reconfigurable sci-fi robot. This is a real walking robot, which gets dressed up as different sci-fi characters. Last time we dressed it up as Bender from Futurama. There's a bit of a series in my channel for building those cosmetics, the mechanical arms and the animatronic head. I think everybody loved that video, so we're gonna move on and do some more characters, although probably some more refined, so it's not so wobbly and it walks better ultimately. But this week we're gonna come back and we're actually gonna build some proper arms for the robot so that we can build more refined robotic characters onto it. In terms of the walking development since the last Bender video, I've been spending quite a lot of time trying to make it stay over one foot for longer. And I've been doing that by driving it actively side to side rather than relying on it just falling in that direction when it picks its feet up. So this seems to work pretty well. It does in fact uh, push its mass and sway quite a bit as it does so, but I can take quite slow steps and these are around 800 milliseconds between steps. It still of course does fast walking as it did before and those steps are about 400 milliseconds between steps. That's much easier though because it tends to stay upright when it's moving quickly. And I'll be doing more development on the walking as we go through the series rather than concentrating on it week after week. We've done quite a bit of that already. Have a look back through the series. And when it works well, I'll publish all of the CAD and all of the code and explain how it goes in one in-depth technical episode. In terms of the arms though, we need to implement four axes with four motors. So at the shoulder, we've got three moving in and out, rotating and also twisting. And of course, we've got the elbow. And we're going to build those so we can build other characters on them. So they're going to be quite modular like the rest of the robot made of 3D prints and 2020 extrusion. Of course they'll be fitted on the side here somewhere. But they'll be movable so they can move up and down and left and right and in and out and so on. So they can suit whatever characters we build in the future. If you remember I had two of these dumbbell weights each side. There was another one on this tube. I've already taken one off to make it walk the way it does now. And I'm going to remove the other one and replace the mass with the mass of the arms. This tube is going to be the main shoulder rotation, but in fact I'm going to cut it off and we're going to put something else in there to make the main pivot point on bearings. So I've removed those and that's left lots of space for motors, so we'll probably have a motor here somewhere operating a bevel gear to do the main rotation. And mounted on that we'll have another motor somewhere, however, which uh, causes the arm to rotate outwards and on that a rotational axis, so we get the three shoulder axis. So it looks like I'm going to need some bevel gears, which I haven't used much um, in my 3D printed projects, just so I can keep those motors out of the way there. So um, basically, in Fusion 360, you can import part numbers as a plugin that allows you to import 3D files from McMaster Car, which um, is rather good. However, they don't actually have any uh, miter or bevel gears that have different ratios on them. They've only got the ones that are one-to-one. -one. So I found another website, which is uh, KHK Stock Gears. And they've in fact got this handy thing where you can put a part number in and you can select any CAD format and it will give you the CAD file. So we can get STP, which is a solid format. And all you need to do is go through their data sheet, find the part numbers you want, pop it in there and it will auto generate and uh, give you the CAD for the gears. And that's what I've got in Fusion here. So we've got um, an 18 uh, tooth gear and a 45 tooth gear. And of course these are solid models so I can scale these up. I can make the whole a different size if I want there. I could make this longer and um, do anything I want to it really to fit bearings in or grub screws or scale them to fit the project. And here they are, so they seem to mesh pretty well as you'd expect. It feels lovely and smooth. They've got a lot more teeth on than the gears I've 3D printed before, so um, hopefully that's going to be pretty good. But they're obviously uh, perfectly perpendicular to each other, so provided I mount the motors right and mount this on a uh, axis correctly, it should all be fine. I've designed new side plates for the robot, so now the uh, aluminium tube there goes into a recess and stops, and there's a hole there for an eight mil bit of studding, and that matches the hole in the bearing in the bottom of the bevel gear. There'll be another bearing at the other end, so it's supported at both ends. So I've got my new sides installed, I've got my piece of eight mil studding there that goes all the way through, and we've still got the silver tube here, which the uh, actuator for the front to back pivot of the body rides on. So obviously all we'd need to do is to relocate the arms in the future would be to move this around somewhere else and the corresponding motor for the bevel gear so um, obviously the bevel gears will go on each side here which will make the main um, axis for the arm rotation 
The motor would also need to be relocated. At the moment, it's going to be bolted onto some existing points on the front. And then everything else is mounted on this. So there'll be another plate here with another bearing. So it's supported with a bearing at each end. And that will be the next axis that lifts the arm outwards. So what fits on there is another stage with the bearing on the outside there and some gears to move the arm outwards. So this is the outward lift in this direction, uh, which of course are these gears here. So one is a half gear fixed to that plate, fixed to the bevel gear. And this one is another intermediate gear that runs on it and that's fixed and it drives the red part outwards. Now that gear is going to be driven by a pinion attached to a motor. So we've got this intermediate gear with a bit of a gear reduction, but it's actually not that much. Although you'll notice that the change in the tooth size happens there. So here are some of those gears. This is the one that's going to be fixed and obviously the big gear runs around it to bring the arm out. Now I could have got a pinion like this and put that straight on the motor and driven that around there but actually that's going to be a really bad idea because the gear is so big the leverage on the motor uh, won't be very good. So what we really want is the smallest pinion we can put on the motor and to run that round there but of course we can't get um, a gear with really big teeth on that motor we have to have one with much smaller teeth and that's why I've got the intermediate gear so there is a bit of a reduction there it isn't very much but this one will mesh nicely on here and this one will mesh nicely on here and I really want these big chunky gears on the main axis because that's where any flex will occur so that'll be more forgiving if the gears are bigger and chunkier they're less likely to pop out than if I had tiny teeth all the way around. My opinion there has a captive nut in it and a grub screw to hold it on the flat on the shaft a bit like a 3D printer gear and these are about the same size as the extruder gear in a 3D printer so they should be okay. Now I've got two motors here these are the same motors I used in Gonk Droid's legs which are 100 rpm and I've got these which I thought were going to be more powerful which are also 100 rpm but obviously they have a much bigger motor on however these are driven by a worm gear and these are driven by spur gears and actually I can stop this one with my hand but I can't stop this one so I think I'm going to be using these. And there's the story so far and I've printed both parts for each side. Um, on the other hand of course the motors that turn these bevel gears are much bigger so they're uh, fine to have a massive gear on there and that should be no problem so I just need to make a motor mount to bolt onto here somewhere and that should be fine to turn the first stage which of course has everything else hanging on it. I've made some motor brackets which are just pieces like this and the motor just slots in. I've already inserted one there. It's actually upside down because the shaft is off centre so uh, sticking that piece down brings the shaft higher up. So um, basically those are ABS and I can solvent weld those together with acetone and I've reprinted the side plates from the robot in ABS as well. So I can just position this on here and get that angle of the bevel gear precise with the big bevel gear. So I fitted my motor here and if we just put some power on it we can see that we get quite a good rotation there. In fact, it goes all the way round and back to where it was again. So now we just need to print those side panels so we can mount this intermediate gear and the motor to drive it, and then we'll be getting somewhere. So here's that assembly. That's the bevel gear, of course, that goes on the arm. And in fact, it'll be posed like that and you can see the gears moving there as I move it. So we just need to drive that one now with the motor with the pinion on. Let's just do a little test on that. Yep, that should do. So all I've done with the pivot points for these is actually bolted shorter bits of studding to each side and there's a recess in the plastic there for that so it doesn't run all the way through and that's for quite an important reason. Similarly, I've done the same thing for the shaft this gear fits on. So it only runs up to where the motor bracket is and it doesn't run all the way through because otherwise the motor wouldn't fit there. It would have to go to one side and I wouldn't be using the space efficiently. There we go, that's all mounted up. You can see I've left quite a bit of space in here and that allows me to put a bigger motor in if this thing's not up to it. You can get these in uh, different gear ratios as well, but I could put in a bigger motor there of a planetary gearbox. So let's just give that some power. Seems to work pretty well and we've got quite a wide range of movement there. Now I mentioned these shafts that don't go all the way through and that's so that I can put feedback pots in there in the future. So one will fit like that and one will fit like that. And you'll notice I've uh, off-centered these so they don't go through the same axis. This one is slightly lower and that's just to make sure that the uh, one isn't in the, the way of the other basically. So I'll make some small mounts for those and some couplers that attach these shafts to those shafts. So now we need two more axes, one to take the arms like this and the elbow as well. And the motors for those axes are going to be these servos. Now these are quite bigger than a normal RC servo. These are jumbo servos. They're the Hi-Tech HS805BB+. 
And these are the same ones I used in Ultron's head and BB-8's head. And they're in fact the same motors that are used in the InMove project, if you've seen that. Um, I'm not going to be putting the joint straight on the axis of the servo, though. As you can see, I've got a gear attached that's screwed to the servo horn. So that is going to drive another gear and give me a 2 to 1 reduction. Obviously, this servo will do 180 degrees, and we really only need 90 degrees for those joints, so it makes a lot of sense to gear it down. So that servo sits in this square hole, driving the gear attached to it, and that drives another gear, and that gear is suspended on some studding, which is bolted in. There's a nut recess here, and the base of that section we've already built has this big, thick base in to hold that axis. Uh, the uh, bottom here, this is in fact all going to be attached in one piece, and that has bearing recesses top and bottom, so that's going to rotate around that studding driven by these gears and on that we have another familiar looking hole for the second servo and that's going to drive gears on the other side that drive the elbow joint which is also suspended on bearings and comes out of this hole here so that should give us uh, quite a good elbow in the right place and the next two axes so here's the first part which is that base with the servo sticking out the studding is bolted top and bottom and that fits just in there obviously it's got screw holes to attach to this box and we just need the other gear on the bottom now. Right, there we are. So we've got that mounted on a bearing either side with the big gear, and obviously the servo is the small gear, and that appears to run pretty smoothly. So obviously that bit of studding is actually bolted in the top and the bottom, and this is running on bearings. And mounted on there is the final stage, which is actually the elbow. So now this piece turns as it did before, and we've also got these gears of another servo, which is to actually make the elbow move. And again, we've got a 180 degree servo, so that's geared down to 90. But if the elbows start sort of not quite straight, it'll be able to move up past being bent to 90 degrees. So I think that's gonna be okay. These gears mesh really well. And um, I think that's gonna work really well. There's hardly any backlash in there at all. I need to make a lower arm to go on there, but I'm actually just gonna make a stump, which is this part here, which is attached to both sides. So we've got a hub attached to that studding with another grub screw and uh, obviously it's attached to the gear which is actually driven by the servo so although it's a bit of studding through with grub screws they're both actually coupled together um, mechanically and we i've left holes here in fact so we can put another plate on the back if we need to to keep those in sync so it doesn't twist obviously it is just a stump because uh, the forearm will be built out to be whatever character we build on the robot Right, so those elbow parts are fitted to make the arm stump, which now lives on the bottom, and of course rotates on that gear, so that's the arm bent, and that's the arm straight. I've left it so it doesn't go completely straight, because that's generally how elbows work, but we could of course just turn that gear around a notch and it will go back a bit more. So there it is mounted on the arm, so we've got the elbow there that can rotate, and obviously we've got the ability to then tip the arm around. I've just installed some temporary forearms there made of giant Lego bricks. Check out my giant Lego Hyper Reality Blaster project to see more about those. But you can see it can do some quite extreme poses. Yep, should be pretty good for dancing. So what's good and what's bad? Well, I'm pretty happy with this thing. So this works pretty well, that's pretty tight. And obviously those servos uh, and the gears mesh pretty well. So that's gonna be easy to control. Pretty happy with this part. As I said, I've left a larger space in here to get a better motor in if I need to, but that seems all right for now. The only problem I do have is wobbly arms at the very first joint we made. And why is that? Well, it's actually the gears mesh okay, but it's the backlash in this motor. So this geared motor, um, you can actually see the, um, the thing moves there, which isn't very helpful. So I had these motors anyway. I didn't buy them specially. Not very happy with this sticking out either, but actually that's really loose, which is causing that whole leverage down the arm to move. So um, probably need to do something different with that. I think I'm gonna get some worm gear gearboxes to go in there with a right angle and then use a spur gear instead of this bevel gear. But I haven't got time to order them and get the video out in time, so we'll have to do that next time. 
Of course, we need a control system to control all those motors to actually make the arms move. So the servos are no problem because they're just servos. They just need some power regulation. We can just feed them with a servo signal. But the DC motors, as I say, are going to need the feedback pots and some motor drivers. So I've got some small motor drivers that will fit in the arm, in fact, there. So there's lots of space there for them. And then I'm probably going to put a small Arduino in each arm to turn those into I squared C devices so we can control those from the main Arduino, which is currently out of analog ins, unfortunately, to read the pots. So we need to make these into a subsystem. At some point, we need to move the battery that powers the electronics so we can put the head on. So I'm probably going to build a backpack so we can have that battery and perhaps one other big Arduino, like a Mega, which will be the management Arduino that will deal with more sensing and the remote control. That's all for this time, but next time we're going to come back and replace those motors and redesign that hub assembly so we don't have wobbly arms, fit the control system and get those arms moving. As I mentioned in the last part of Bender, we're going to redesign the remote as well, so we're going to put a bigger Arduino in there with a display and an analog joystick and more controls, and hopefully fit a management Arduino on here that can monitor motor temperatures and deal with some other sensing, and that's going to be linked to the main Arduino with I squared C, because that's the only interface that's left. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And also you should check out my Patreon campaign, which is how all of these projects are funded. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including all my videos early and a live broadcast with me. All right, that's all for now.